Do you want to see how I made a cami top with 50 centimeters of precious, precious fabric? Stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing. Welcome. Before I deep dive into what I'm dying to show you, I would love you to subscribe to the channel, be a part of this community, tap on that bell so you never miss when I upload a video full of sewing tips and tricks that might help you. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for all your comments on yesterday's video where I showed you my skirts relaxed sewing. I am continuing with that same sort of vibe for today's video because actually what I've got to show you I made in like an hour and a half tops. Tops I'm, I, and I'm talking cutting everything. <laughs> Very relaxed sew. It's something I've already made before that I always had intention of making again and the fabric is to die for. Now in the previous video I mentioned that there was a fabric I bought at the craft fair at the Mega Artesanal that had inspired me so much, so much that I wanted to sew it immediately and this is the fabric. Uh, with my son we passed through a store that was selling supplies to make bags. They had several samples there. They had like all sorts of fabric that was appropriate for bags like thickish, very heavyweight canvas and all sorts tools and metalware I have no idea what they're for because I'm not really into bag making so they had a fabric there that was for dressmaking I mean for me it's perfectly suitable for dressmaking beautiful chambray with embroidered flowers in like a gold sort of beige color and I'm touching it and I'm like this is for clothes what is this fabric doing in this shop like no you can't make a bag out of this fabric and then I look around and they had a backpack they had some like little zipper pouches and pencil cases they had all sorts of samples made out of this fabric anyway people can make bags with whatever they want but this fabric was just too nice I got really excited thinking this is going to be really cheap if it's, uh, it's going to be cheaper because it's for bags, you know, in my naive mind because I have no idea. So I asked the woman, oh, you know, what does this, what's the price? And they had it in little packs of half a meter, a meter or two meters. And she tells me the price for the two meter bundle. And I mean, I almost gasped. I couldn't even like, I was like, <laughs> okay, how about half a meter? <laughs> Let's say that this fabric was about $25 a meter and that is a substantial amount of money to spend on one meter of fabric. The width was, you know, it was wide, 150 centimeters wide, the wide fabric, you know, but hey, $25 a meter. So I loved it so much and it was just, I couldn't walk out of there without it. And so I got 50 centimeters, 50 centimeters. And I know I can make a cami top out of 50 centimeters with creativity. So I got it and I came home. I washed it the next day in the morning. I didn't even have the patience to let it dry because it's winter, it's freezing. Fabric would take a few hours to dry. So I washed it, I took it to my ironing board and very patiently ironed it dry. It took me a while, I'm gonna tell you. And I cut it out and I started sewing and everything. So what is this? This is the Crystal Cove Cami by Each to Stitch. I made two versions last year as a pattern tester, two of them. And I love the top, it's got cup sizes, it's a side buster, the neckline is really modest. At the back there's a super cute crossover detail and you know creativity was encouraged during this pattern test to be able to hem the cami in different sort of ways with embellishments and for one of them I chose to make a tiny little ruffle that went all around the back crossover and across the hem and everything. That top was made out of silk, it's beautiful, the flow is just gorgeous. The other one was made out of viscose and I, for the crossover back hem I just used by binding and it turned out super neat. I already have a full video review about this pattern last year already on the channel. I'll put the thumbnail so you can recognize it if you see. 
I'll link it in the cards and also in the description box so that you can go and watch that if you want to. Unfortunately, I don't have these tops with me. I took them to Chile during the summer for summer holiday. I wore them there. And when we were coming back, our suitcases were so packed. I left a bunch of clothes over at my mother-in-law's house hanging in the closet with the intention of when I go again this summer, I basically have to take nothing, you know, like underwear and bras because I have a lot of clothes there already. Now this one, what did I do different? I always wanted to widen that strap. So the original pattern has a spaghetti strap. You can see that on the photos, very thin. Look, I have long hair, you know, I have, I use a thin bra strap when I wear them. It's not that noticeable. The straps are placed in the right place, you know. It's not like there's a bra strap like in another area, but I'm always more comfortable with a thicker strap. So my aim was to draft a strap that was three centimeters wide, it would just cover my bra strap. And for that, I need to modify the neckline a little bit. What I'm going to show you in Up Close and So Personal can work with this cami top. It can work with other patterns as well. You just apply the same thing. You know, I always give you approximations of measurements that I use because I do a lot of eyeballing and you know, that's how I roll. But I think this could be super useful for you. So let's hop into that. This is the back piece, it's wider because it has an overlap at the back. This is the front, this one goes cut on the fold and as you can see on the top areas there's some yellow paper where I've modified the neckline slightly so I can have wider straps. That yellow area you know is how I lower bust studs, <laughs> so <laughs> that is what you see there. It doesn't really modify the length of the top, it just moves the dart down by two centimeters. That's what I needed here for this C cup. Now all these patterns have layers, so I could have just chosen the size I wanted and not had all these lines, but when I printed this, I forgot. And I didn't want to print it again, so I had to just cope with the lines. I think layers are always better, especially for darts and these areas, they avoids confusion. So if there are layers in your pattern, it's better to use them. <laughs> Don't do it like I did this time. So this is on the white, you can see the outline of the original neckline. The width there on the top will accommodate a spaghetti type strap, very thin. And I want my strap to be three centimeters wide. So I measured here from this point there and just extended it towards the center of the top by a quarter of an inch. And then from there, just added a bit more paper there to this neckline, tapering to zero about there. So from the center front, about two inches up is where actually the yellow paper starts where i added like a tiny bit of to the neckline it really doesn't modify the neckline much it doesn't make it that much taller but a few millimeters and that allows me to have more fabric towards this side now to the other side towards your armpit i wanted more coverage so i extended it a bit more now i have a three centimeter gap there and that is what I want for my strap right and I, I want some seam allowance on each side so whatever seam allowance you like having that's how much you need <laughs> that is how much I need there to get that three centimeter strap to fit now over here on the top I wanted a bit more coverage so I raised this by five eighths of an inch it's quite smudged there but that's what that says five eighths of an inch and then with a French curve, I just sort of drew that line there to match this area up here. So it's just adding a bit more fabric there to the armpit area. I like, I like to have that area really covered. I've done basically the same thing to the back. I've just mimicked what I've done at the front. So here is the back neckline towards the center. I have extended that same amount and then added a bit more there, tapering into nothing there at the back. That's towards the center back, that way. 
and then towards the armpit the same raised it by five eighths of an inch and then with my french curve just made a nice curve there to match the top there the pattern comes with two facing pieces and these facing pieces will match the original neckline right so i have modified the neckline it means i need to like modify the facings now the back facing only reaches to a certain point here that blue line that you see there is the center back and that's where the back will overlap so actually the facing will only reach there and then be extended like it's on the fold so you have another piece there that's why the facing looks shorter than the back piece so i have just taken paper and traced out new facings to match my current neckline so they have the same shape here on the bottom they follow the same shape of the original facing there only that there's more on the top and everything to match what I've done here so those are the only modifications I've made to the top, the neckline, the armpit area to accommodate a larger strap very easy to do and very easy to customize if you would like even a thicker strap than 3 centimeters, say 3.5 centimeters, I wouldn't go further than 3.5 centimeters. You could extend that to the center just a little bit more to accommodate half a centimeter more and then just modify that curve slightly there. Same with the front. But I think three centimeters is okay for a thick strap that is a rectangle. Okay, so I said I wanted my strap to be three centimeters wide. So I just grabbed a piece of paper and folded it. This here is the fold of the paper right there. So I just measured three centimeters and then added a quarter of an inch seam allowance. That's that red line that you can see there. And now the length of the strap depends on your body and the feet and everything. And I know this length from trial and error and from making a cami and all that stuff. So my specific strap is 26 and a half centimeters. And that includes seam allowance on each end where it'll go inside the facing. So I would suggest just making it longer than what you think and then adjusting it to your body to determine how long you really want it to be. And then once you know and you're happy, you can have like a final piece. So because this is double, this opens up. That's why I measured and all that with the paper on the fold so that then it would just be easy to just open it up. And then I just cut two of these. These are cut normally like with the grain line going down they're not cut on the bias the original pattern piece is very narrow it's a spaghetti strap and this one is cut on the grain line and that is appropriate but for a really thick strap to cut on the bias doesn't make any sense really so just on the normal grain line so you see i've taken the fabric and folded it with the selvages towards the middle i've got a fold there and then i've got the back piece on over there this embroidery is non-directional so i can place one pattern piece going up the other one down all that fabric bunched up in the middle that you see there that doesn't have embroidery that is what i'm going to use for the shoulder straps so on the front what you're seeing on your right side of the screen the way you can see the little dot there i don't have enough to cut that curve there so my cami top is going to be slightly shorter on the front and have a more flatter shape but it is, it is going to meet the side seams of the back piece i'm a c cup so my bust isn't you know that large compared to other people's but it does i feel it i feel the weight of it i have my bra that supports it and makes me feel comfortable and those straps for me tend to be about an inch wide typically so that's why I aim for a strap that is wider than my bra strap. Why didn't I make it super thick? Now that's the problem. We have a shoulder slope, right? So if you make a rectangle that's that thick and just put it across there, you're going to have all this gaping here because that strap, if it's just a rectangle, doesn't follow your shoulder slope. If you're just going to use a normal rectangle strap, and it's three and a half centimeters wide, you can get away with it just being there and not causing that gaping there on the slope because it's it's narrow enough to not cause that problem. So I'm just, I'm just letting you know why I don't go ham and like make a thick strap, like a huge one, you know what I mean? When it's a thin spaghetti strap that what I'm talking about, the slope has no, no relation to anything. You can just do your little strap, you know? 
and at this width that I do I think is the widest I would go just using a rectangular piece for the strap wider than that would need some shaping and some more like advanced drafting so that's that <laughs> I shall stop talking and show you this amazing top and this is my Crystal Cove cami it is chambray it is the drapiest it's light to medium weight and look at this embroidery on the fabric it is just amazing there you can see it better so the embroidery is not shiny it's opaque so it's not like shiny if it was shiny I wouldn't like it I like it like this it's opaque and oh I just I couldn't believe people would make a backpack out of this because it doesn't have the weight for it it would have to be heavily heavily interfaced in, in order to make a bag out of this fabric and I, that's why I thought that fabric has no business being in a bag making shop <laughs> it's apparel fabric it's so beautiful so that's what I mentioned about not having the curve so the original pattern on the front has a curve here which makes it a bit longer on the front and you know there's a curve on the back and this is the crossover I was talking about and I finished all this with bias binding that I made out of this cotton. This is very good quality shirting, leftovers from a shirt I made Martin, my son, last year. So I think it, it goes really well. It's like, it's got gray stripes and they're on the bias, so, you know. <laughs> so that is how I finished everything inside. You can see the hem. I love finishing curved hems with bias binding. I think it gives the best result. And then you can see it's been top stitched on the outside and on the inside there's the under stitch to keep it towards inside and then the other one there catching it to the main fabric here it is inside out here you can see the facing it's been interfaced and surged all around the edge you can see that shape it takes and goes around to the back there is a crossover easily seen there that is caught up there. Now this crossover is enough that you're not going to be like flashing your back when you walk or anything like that. It, that doesn't happen. And there you can see the bias binding. The straps that come, you know, from inside there. And I have done under stitching everywhere to keep the facing nicely tucked in there. It's all very neat. Now a few words about facings. The way this facing is drafted, where it's sort of narrow and follows the shape there, is perfect. Because when you're actually wearing the cami top, the facing is going to be above the bust, or sort of around there. Like it's not going to squash your bust. I have seen some facings on some camis that are a bit longer and hit at a really awkward length. Like there you can see my bust starts, maybe. There's the bust that finishes there. So imagine this facing was longer and like finished right there where the buster is pointing at the apex. Then you have this cami that sort of cuts your bust in two and then you can sort of see that lined through. You can see the outline of that facing through the main fabric and it just cuts your bust in half and it's not flattering. So I think this is great. The way this is drafted is excellent and it's either this or mega long down to there so those are the two options I like or like this or super long I just love how this turned out it's just absolutely beautiful here you can see my cami on you can see that at the front it's a little bit shorter than intended on the side you can tell it's a bit shorter on the front I don't mind look at that cute cross back at the back it's super cute and I love it. I mean, just up close, I want to show you the fabric, the embroidery. You can see where I added extra coverage on the arm side that the bra strap is safely covered. There is my buster I'm trying to point at so you can see the fit is really good. The neckline is super modest. I love that V, there's no gaping anywhere. There is the back. It's covered enough that you're not gonna show your bra straps you know, the horizontal ones. I just love it, it's so beautiful.
I suppose by now you can tell how much I love this. It is just so beautiful and I haven't made a garment like this that is so beautiful in a while where the fabric excited me to this level that I had to make it like now, 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 the next day. And this is just what I needed for my lacking motivation, for my sojo that had been a bit compromised, a beautiful make that I knew how to make, that I'd made before in a fabulous fabric. And this has just got my heart feeling so much different now in regards to my sewing. I really needed a project like this and I'm so, so, so happy, if you can't tell. So, I mean, I see people rave about different types of cami patterns. I'm gonna take one second to rave about this one. <laughs> if you thought the straps were a bit too narrow for you, I've shown you how to fix that, it's very easy. And the cup sizes from A to double D are gonna give you a really nice fit at the bust. The facings are drafted perfect and it's just such a nice pattern for the summer. I'm not in summer, but who cares? It's what really inspired me and what I really wanted to make. You know, I'm wearing my Averio cardigan right now. I, I'm, I'm wearing my slippers down there that you can't see. And I've got a fabulous cami ready to be worn when it gets hot in no time. I hope the hot weather comes back soon. <laughs> I really encourage you to give this pattern a go. It's a very, very good pattern. If I haven't said it enough, I'll say it again. <laughs> My affiliate link for this pattern, any itch to stitch pattern, is down below in my description box if you want to give it a go. It has made me very happy, I can tell you, very, very happy. <laughs> I might have a sneaky video tomorrow as well. Now I've got a bit more because these are taking less to edit and less to produce because I've been making things that have been easier and I, I sort of told you I was going to do that for a week, so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> If you're enjoying the channel, spend a few minutes here, why not? There's so many tips and tricks and hundreds of videos that you can watch to get ideas for your own sewing. Bye! I have tried it.